All right. So after a uh, horrifying uh, discovery yesterday, I uh, looked in a little bit on something and I actually see another uh, mistake possibly occurring right here. Um, but <clears throat> easy solution. So um, I designed, I got through this whole thing. Remember um, that these uh, yellow lines right here are simply a, um, a, a, a generalized uh, type of uh, plan for the roof and that these locations will change, okay? Um, in fact, I can see that this one will change pretty drastically because the ridge right there should be kind of more like this, centered between this end wall and this end wall on the right side of my house, and this side becomes a little bit different, okay? Um, so that right there should not be the case, okay? Um, but what happened was when I looked at, I needed one alignment wall uh, on the back, and I did have an alignment wall back here, but if you can see where this yellow line and this yellow line are, um, I had these things out of alignment by the thickness of the wall, okay? Meaning that this was moved either back, or I think it was moved back. So um, that really uh, botched everything. Uh, it would have caused me to have had, uh, the only solution to that would have been <clears throat> to adjust the length of the soffit and change it um, over here or change it over here or to have a different roof pitch on the front. But what was really happening was that it was making my ridge want to have to do this. Uh, and we can't have a ridge that's not, um, at least in this case with this type of architecture, we can't have anything that's not perpendicular to the building, okay? Um, so <clears throat> going back to where I was at, and this is basically like we're starting from scratch, I've already determined <clears throat> that an 812 pitch is kind of what I'm shooting for in this house. And there's, it has some to do with what is happening on this house, okay? Uh, I think it complements it nicely. So what I'm going to do to get an 812 pitch, now I could come up and just draw a line and say, okay, so that means that every 8 inches I come up, I go over 12 inches, okay? And then I could connect the dots. And I used to do this for some reason just like this, and I stopped because I realized how many times I lost that little, uh, that little piece of line on my page, okay? <clears throat> Plus, it wasn't very useful. So in this case, what I do is I just come up 8 feet, <clears throat> and then I come over 12 feet. Okay. And when I connect the dots, <clears throat> I now have a <clears throat> line and an 812 roof pitch. And the thing you might want to do is go ahead and do this early on, and then you don't have to keep doing it over and over again, is go ahead and mirror your um, your pitches, okay? So I move these out of the way, and I just, I like to borrow text. I don't like to keep drawing it over and over again. But what I do is I go find a piece of text somewhere on the drawing. This will work right here. Hey, it already says 12. So I'll copy it, and I'll bring it up. And the reason is that you will, when you're done with this, on your elevation drawings, you will label these um, this is a like a pitch symbol, pitch diagram. Okay, that's all a carpenter needs to figure out a rafter length is just needs to know the right, the rise, and the run. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm starting with the right side <clears throat> because it is the widest. I, I like to start with gables first, and if I look from here to here, this is like the longest run that I have on a gable end, and it's also going to wind up becoming the highest point. Okay. This right here becomes a little different because this notch is missing. This is a lower gable. So what I'm doing is I'm putting this on the right side. And it could be on the left side. It's just, it really depends on your house. You want to go from the simplest, easiest, and largest is what you want to really focus on. Okay. And I should have just copied that, but I didn't because I might want to use it again. So I went to the end of the fascia board in both cases. Okay. And now I want to go ahead and take a really long, let's move that a little bit, a really long line. And we know that we're never going to have, let's see, anything stick past this furthest point out here 
which is the left side of the major section of the roof. <clears throat> and we know if we come out here, we're never going to have anything stick past that portion either. Okay. So now, <clears throat> and in fact, I might have just moved that in the wrong spot because I hadn't placed this one yet. Yes. Oh, so you can see I did put that in the wrong spot completely. Okay. So let us go ahead and trim this overlap. That's what happened was I put it at the top of that line. And here's a real easy way to mark that location so I don't have to redraw it or adjust it. Now this tells me that if I move this from this intersection to right there, nothing has changed as far as the alignment on the left and right. Okay. So at this point, that's the highest part of my roof. And now let's go ahead and work um, on the other side. Okay. Um, so this is over here, which means that on this projection out. Okay. Now, if I look at it from the left side, this lands at this same corner. So the, the left side of that gable over here is on this corner. So now the right side of that gable will be on this corner. So I can literally just copy this. Bring it from here and place it right there. And if I haven't made any mistakes on my drawing, then that should come all the way back to here, which is super. Okay. So I mentioned that I was going to use an eight pitch also on the front. There's nothing that says that you have to. You could use any pitch you want to. But I'm just going to use an eight to keep it simple. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to place it right here on this front gable. Okay, this is not a hip. This is a direct slope from a ridge and you'll see where that ridge is in just a second when I take this and place it right here. So the ridge then becomes the intersection of those two angled lines. You can see I've got two little niblets right there. Again, I can use my same trick, just draw from here to this line. Let's just borrow this line again. Why am I doing this? This is just like what I do when I set uh, window heights or and I align everything to the top of a door. That just simply makes it easy for me to kind of shoot those important points all the way across this drawing. Okay. So now we're simplified a little bit. Well, let's, let's go ahead at this point and simplify. And we can say anything that is above the highest point of the roof does not belong. And apparently I froze trim. Nope, we're good. Okay. And we can also say that anything that's in between the end of the roof does not belong. Some people like to, sometimes I actually do myself keep those lines running. Um, if it helps you just to kind of see what's going on down the road. Okay. So uh, right here, this line is a goner. I've already identified the highest point of this gable right here. So that's a goner. And these fascia boards do not extend anywhere above that gable. So that's a goner and that's a goner. Okay. And then you're going to have a, like a little nib right there in your fascia board which you can remove or not remove. It really doesn't matter by the time you fill everything in. So that is that, and that is that, okay? Um, I'm going to worry about making the fascia boards look realistic once I'm all said and done, okay? So what do we have here? Well, if I'm standing here looking at the sliding glass door, here's me, and I'm standing at the sliding glass door, the roof pitches from this being the high point or the ridge down towards me at the sliding glass door. Okay, so this part is insignificant now. So when we look at this from the right or left side, these upper lines are no longer significant. Okay, but what is significant? This is the ridge of that gable and it projects out from here. So that means that that is a goner and that means, again, we don't have any kind of anything sticking out above that fascia board or above this one. So all of that can be erased. Okay. 
And there are no fascia boards that go up into the roof anywhere. But these two face the edge of this fascia board or this gable end intersects at the top of the roof. Now we've established this side, okay? <clears throat> Which is going to be a mirror image of this side. Um, there's one thing on this that's a little bit goofy, and I actually have this in the back left corner of my house, but there's a notch right here, okay? Meaning that this right here, this slope connects all the way to the back corner. Um, what that means here, sometimes you'll see something like this, but this is actually not the case in this scenario. Sometimes you'll see something like this. Um, that's not the case here. This, in fact, uh, this in fact goes straight up. So it's literally like the roof just stops at that location. So we would see just this notch. And then this is a flat, uh, almost like a gable end where the roof is missing, but it'll make more sense when that evolves a little bit more. Okay. Uh, again, going back here, we don't see anything projecting above the back of the house. Nothing goes through that gable, right? That's like an A. It's a flat wall. It's not a hip. Um, nothing goes above there. Nothing goes above there and nothing goes above there. So now we've developed the right side. And then the back, um, <clears throat> there will be something, again, a little bit goofy. This lower point, right, this lower line is the one that corresponded with um, this right here. And so that's a goner. And <clears throat> this portion of this notch is really the highest portion of that little notched out corner of the back of my house is where this is going to wind up. And this is something that we'll address uh, later. But in fact, if we are seeing this from, let's see, I see the notch from the back. Yes, I do. So this will, this will, uh, this is something almost just to leave alone. Um, and then kind of come back to, I feel like. So that's the, 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 the overall. Um, and the next thing I'll do is I'll come back and I'll put fascia boards on this. And then I'll make uh, bird boxes a separate video, I believe, at this point. When you do get to this point, you can go ahead and use your match properties tool. Uh, the reason I draw everything on a construction line at first is just because it helps me separate, you know, what is what I'm doing versus what uh, needs to be done. OK, um, you should also you want to look and see the, 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 what's happening here makes sense up here because now for your actual roof plan okay we we now want to go ahead and you know what i'll cover that in the next uh, video because now we do have to make modifications to what's happening um, at this point so that our roof plan is actually correct okay so we'll call it quits there I'll come back and i'll do uh, transferring your elevations to now make your roof plan correct